What's up guys, welcome back to Oregon Coast Fishing. I apologize if you tried to watch that last video. I tried to upload it and for whatever reason I lost about a quarter of the video. Not sure what happened there, but we're back out here. We're just gonna redo the whole video. A um, few things I wanna talk about. Number one, uh, thank you guys for all the support from my last video I uploaded. Uh, got a bunch, of, a bunch of views, likes and comments and uh, new subscribers, so I appreciate that. Uh, Number two, I know I promised you guys some epic content coming out soon. I actually am just getting over COVID right now, so wasn't able to uh, get out there and fish all week. Um, not that the conditions right now in southern Oregon coast are too ideal. Uh, we got sunshine and blue blue skies and some really low clear water, uh, which you know isn't the worst worst case scenario. Um, just makes things a little bit tougher. But uh, we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. We're going to kind of go over what you can expect to see uh, as far as, you know, if you subscribe to this channel, uh, some of the stuff I'm going to be doing. But for now, what we're going to talk about is basically bobber fishing 101. And we are really going to talk about, you know, the fundamentals. And uh, one of the key concepts, I think, to fishing a bobber like this is mending your line. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, first things first, I got a couple things tied up that's, you know, I'm kind of aiming this video at those guys who are, uh, you know, haven't caught a steelhead yet and aren't really sure where to start. I know when I started fishing about three years ago, somebody passed on some information to me and, uh, you know, I, I found some YouTube videos that helped and I was able to get out there and land my first fish and uh, it's been, it's been a, uh, an addiction ever since. So, okay, the first thing we're going to talk about, I don't get this too tangled up here. I'm not going to talk about your, your rod and reel selection. Um, if you've got a rod and reel that you think is, is strong enough to handle a steelhead, then go out there and fish. You know, don't worry about buying all the, the fancy gear. That doesn't come till after you catch your first steelhead. And then that's when the paychecks start to disappear. Um, just kidding. But So the first thing you want, uh, you, your main line. Okay, you're going to want to use 30 to 40 pound braid. Um, I prefer to use some high-vis stuff. You can see it better as it's going across the top of the water. Um, that's one of the specific reasons that you use braid is because it floats on the water. Uh, and, and realistically, when that thing's floating on the water, you're going you're gonna to be mending your line, which we're going to talk about here shortly. But uh, we'll get into that here in a second. Okay, so you got your, your 30 to 40 pound braid, and when you buy these, these floats here, Usually they come in little two packs. There's a bunch of different varieties. Uh, these are the ones that I prefer here. Okay, so when you, when you buy these little floats, they come with these, uh, these little bobber stops that are also in the package. And basically what it is, is a, it's a piece of thread that's wrapped around a piece of surgical tubing. And uh, that's the very first thing you want to put on. So that goes straight onto your braid. And basically what you do is you slide that surgical tubing up and then you, you, you slide the thread off the, the surgical tubing take the surgical tubing all the way off okay then you're going to take these two tag ends here and I've left them long so I can show you guys and what you do is you cinch that down tight onto your line okay now what that does is you can still move this and what that's going to do throughout the day is going to allow you to adjust your depth of your presentation okay so you put that on first okay the next thing that you put on is your float here okay so it goes bobber stop float Okay, and then what I like to do is I like to add one of these little egg sinkers here. And uh, so if you look at your bobber, it'll tell you this is a 3 8 ounce bobber. And what they tell you to do is try to match that weight. Um, so I have a 3 8 ounce bobber and a 1 8 ounce uh, small weight here. And the reason I'm using a smaller weight is because I'm also using this, this jig head here that's weighted. And uh, basically, if you, put, if you put too much weight on, you know, you're going to pull that bobber almost all the way under the water. You're not going to be able to see it very good. And uh, when you're fishing a float like this, what you're looking for is you're waiting for that, that float to go down under the water. And that lets you know, hey, a fish has grabbed it and pulled it down under. Okay. So bobber stop, bobber, egg sinker. Okay, then you're going to tie your braid straight to a barrel swivel like that. Okay, and on one end and on the other end is where you're going to tie your leader. You can use... Anywhere from 10 to 15 pound. I've even seen guys use a little bit bigger than 15 pound. Um, you can use fluorocarbon, fluorocoated. I prefer 15 pound mono extra strength. Um, it's what I tend to break less fish off on. Okay, so 
realistically you're going to want to use anywhere from a two to a four foot leader and uh, you can kind of think about you know what's the what's the shallowest water i'm going to be fishing that day and if you're going to be fishing three foot deep water then maybe you're going to want to run a two foot leader because you know if, you, if you're fishing three foot deep water and you've got a four foot leader tied on okay when you throw this thing out you're going to be dragging the bottom the whole time you're going to snag up you're going to break off and you're going to have to retie okay so you got your leader on there I got this kind of tangled on there. Okay, so this is an addicted sink it series jig right here. And what I'll do with this is you can put, you know, a, a whole sand shrimp on here, a live sand shrimp. Uh, you can use a coon shrimp. You can put um, roe on there. They, they make spray that you can spray on the feathers here uh, and, and get some scent on it. Or you can just fish it just as it is. Okay, I like to spice it up and add some some scent and some, some bait on there. Uh, you know give me a little bit better success um, okay so that's the setup guys it's pretty simple okay the next setup I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing because it's it's basically the exact same thing the only thing that's different is on the bottom of this on the bottom of my leader okay I've got a, a steelhead worm tied to it and what it is is you you tie this jig head on I don't know if you guys can see that so you tie that jig head on and then you put one of these steelhead worms on. You got to kind of feed it on. It's pretty self-explanatory. You go through the, the head of the worm and kind of work it down. Find that sweet spot. You want to get that worm as straight as you can on that hook shank. Okay. And you're going to be fishing that thing the exact same way. You're going to, you're going to want this thing anywhere from, you know, six inches to 18 inches off the bottom. Okay. So if, if you cast out your bobbers either pointed up river, pointed downriver I guess it would be pointed downriver or it's going down you know bobbing going down okay that means you're dragging the bottom and that's not what you want you don't want this thing touching the bottom okay you want it right off the bottom okay so those are two setups that are going to get you out there fishing I'm going to put you in the strike zone and, and hopefully help you get a steelhead okay the next thing we're going to be talking about is mending line and I think this is a definitely a key concept of, of you know fishing these floats like this out there bobber fishing and I think it's very you know overlooked um, I've got family that comes up from from Reno uh, from California you know and they come up to, to steelhead fish and I think uh, you know I've, I've noticed just with a lot of people you go out there for your first time steelhead fishing and and you spend pretty much the entire first day just trying to figure out how to mend your line okay and it's not that it's really that difficult it's just different you know, it's something something different that unless you grew up fly fishing or something like that, you're going to kind of have to get used to it and it takes a little practice, okay? So we're going to be talking about it from the bank, okay? Because I'm prim primarily, I fish steelhead from the bank. And so now, okay, so if you're in the center here, make sure you guys can see, if you're in the center here, okay, so your first cast, and as you can see, I got this arrow here, and this is showing you guys that the water is flowing this way, okay? So if you're in the center, you're going to want to cast at a 45 degree angle, okay, up river. Okay, you want to really work this thing 45 degrees to 45 degrees. Okay, so when you cast at your 45 degrees, it's going to start working back down river. And as it does, this line, you're going to need to pick it up and kind of reel some of this line in. Okay, you want to avoid, really avoid pulling this thing because you don't want to pull it out of the current and you don't want this thing to look unnatural you know if you're kind of tugging on it and moving it it's not going to find that natural current line and you're going to kind of affect the way that this thing fishes okay so you cast out as it's coming back down you're kind of picking up that slide that that slack in your line okay so right as it gets about direct even with you okay this is where you're going to lift up and you're going to make your first mend and what i mean by that is you're going to pick your line up off the water and kind of place it back behind your float okay and as soon as you do that when this thing's straight out in front of you and you place this back behind your float you want to open your bail because now this thing's kind of going down river and it's going to be taking out line as it does okay so this is where mending really where it's really key to mend here okay so as your your floats going down river okay your float and your jig or, or your worm or whatever you're fishing you know has some weight to it and this this your braid's going to be sitting on top of the water okay your braid's going to be going down faster than your float is so if you just let that do its thing you're going to end up with a giant loop in front 
making sure you guys can see that here, a giant loop in front of your, your float. And now if that fish takes that thing down, you have to reel all that slack all the way back in before you get to your float and you're able to make a hook set. Okay, so it's very important to make sure that you keep, you know, as that, that line's going down faster, that you're picking it back up and placing it back behind the float. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick little clip here of the last steelhead I caught where you'll, you, you can see in the video how fast, you know, I'll show you exactly where that float goes down and how fast I pick up that line and set the hook. And, and what allowed me to do that is mending my line. Okay, if I had that big loop in my line and had to pick that all the way back up, you only get, you know, maybe three, four seconds when that bobber goes down to set that hook a lot of these times. You know, a lot of times that fish will grab it and go, hey, that's not what I was thinking and spit that thing back out. You'll see your bobber go down and then come right back up before you ever have a chance to set the hook. I know there. There's a fish. Got him, baby. Okay. So, like I said, you know, mending mending's very crucial and uh, you know, another thing I want to talk about too is if you've got a large rock at the top of your run and you've got current going this way and current going, you know, I don't have another arrow, but current going kind of a different direction and you cast to that far line, keep your line up off the water. And you'll see guys standing there with their rod tips as high as they can and that's to keep that line up off the water because what will happen is your line will get caught in one current, okay, your 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 floats in another and they'll start pulling on each other and it'll really affect your drift. Okay, so that's another thing you don't want to happen when you're when you're fishing these floats. Um, so that's that's really float fishing 101. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot more in-depth videos that you can check out. Um, I'll try to make some more some more how-to videos when I'm actually out there on the water and I'll show you, you know, where where I'm actually casting at, you know, what I'm looking at, what I'm, what I, how I pick apart the water, basically. And uh, so we'll do some more of those. If there's anything specific that you want to see, drop a comment below and let me know. Um, you know, I can show you start to finish, how I tie up, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to see, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Um, the last thing I said I was going to talk about here was what you can expect if you go down and subscribe to this channel. Um, like I said, this is Southern Oregon coast and we do year year round fishing here. So I'm basically going to be exploiting all the fishing that Southern Oregon coast has to offer. Um, it's mid January right now. We're still out chasing steelhead. We got, you know, probably a month and a half, two months left of that. So um, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification because I can guarantee you there's going to be more steelhead content coming soon. Um, after that, we're going to be jumping into some salmon fishing. Uh, we're going to be going after some Chinook and some Coho and uh, in some really cool ways we're actually fishing from the bank and uh, a lot of the times we're at the mouth of these rivers where they meet the ocean so we're getting these fresh chrome you know bright fish coming in and uh, you know we're, we're fishing with these giant one ounce spinners and, and casting them out as far as we can and hooking these fish you know and we've got seals chasing them in it's a it's a complete rodeo sometimes but it's a lot of fun um, we're going to be doing some bass fishing maybe some bass fishing tournaments um, possibly have a new salmon boat in the works so we're going to be doing some some trolling out there with the, some 360 flashers um, we're even going to do some you know how to's on some trout fishing just your simple you know power bait night crawler setups um, so make sure you go down and subscribe hit that bell notification uh, you know drop a comment tell me where you're tuning in from uh, where you're watching from and you know like I said if there's anything you want to see let me know uh, that's about it guys stay fishy and uh, Go catch some fish.